Emergency communication is about getting information where it needs to be, when it needs to be there, and under adverse conditions. Communication might take the form of bursts of chatter, of formal written messages, or of something else, like images. Are you testing and exercising your ability to communicate when the usual options aren't available? In this installation of Radio KD8 TTE, we're going to look at the use of images and doing so with HF. Stick around. Black Swan, Black Swan. When working at close distance, we can use higher and higher frequencies for radio communication. The work presented in this video is not meant to cover an emergency operations center to an incident command post just a few streets away or even across town. Much higher frequency circuits can be used in those cases to transfer higher resolution images, video, and anything else that a data circuit can provide. This work is meant to provide a means to communicate when that's not possible, either because you don't have enough operators and relay stations to establish that local data network, or when you need to cover more territory, such as across a state or from one state to another. In practice, that means using HF, high frequency, also known as shortwave, 3 to 30 megahertz, or even MF, medium frequency, or medium wave, 300 kilohertz to 3 megahertz. For about a year, I have been following the shortwave radiogram program broadcast on commercial shortwave. The program includes some phone mode emissions, text, and images, comparing the same program transmitted at different times of the day, different frequencies, and from different locations can be helpful for building up some expectations of what works and what works for a particular set of needs. I discuss shortwave radiogram in Radio KD8 TTE episode 32. Thanks to Kim Andrew Elliott KD9XB for running shortwave radiogram and uh, helping me to develop some ideas along these lines. Here's an example from shortwave radiogram program 247. I received three transmissions of the program. My first reception was from WINB in Red Lion, Pennsylvania, via 9 megahertz on the 11th of March at 0030 Zulu, or in Eastern Standard Time, 730 in the evening on the 10th of March. My station decoded nine images. The next reception was from the same station on the same frequency, but three hours later in the evening. Reception quality was not as good, and I could decode only seven of the nine images that I received earlier. This is not a surprise. As we get deeper into nighttime conditions, the distance shortwave signals travel will go longer. Much of the power of that signal is simply skipping over my receive antenna. My third reception was from WRMI in Okeechobee, Florida, via 5 MHz on the 13th of March at 4 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Daylight Time. A few hours later than the previous reception, but on a lower frequency over a longer distance, quality is much better, and all 10 images decoded. Communication by image is, of course, nothing new. We use them frequently, such as in maps uh, for weather, for example. Marine weather has for many years and to this day is broadcast by a global network of radio fax transmitters. Charts of weather conditions at sea can be received by sailors to help them with navigation and safety. Receiving these charts by radio fax requires only a shortwave receiver and the gear to decode it. No service to pay for or subscribe to. Transmissions are directed to give coverage to ships at sea, but even as far inland as Ohio, I can regularly receive these transmissions from NMF Boston and NMG New Orleans. Inspired by this capability, we have started using images to transmit critical information during exercises and operations on the Black Swan Net. Comparing how different stations received the same transmission has been valuable for us to understand how well transmitting stations were covering the state as well. Before we started to include transmissions of real information, we did some test transmissions to help everyone practice receiving and to adjust their stations accordingly. 
Some discovered a slant in the image, others found that their clocks were out of sync, and some found that some crackly noise that could be worked through created much bigger problems for images than expected. About a month after those test transmissions, we started to incorporate images in our exchange of messages on the Black Swan Net. Situation reports could be sent by text and then have a follow-up image. We have been surprised to discover that even with low resolution, high-level information could still be conveyed in a way that many find easier to consume than a large table of text that we might put into a bulletin. Consider a map, for example, that shows areas affected in different ways. A prediction of excessive rainfall showing possible areas of flooding could be transmitted as tabular data, though it's not clear that everyone would want all of the data for the whole state. Such an opportunity presented itself in October 2021, and the National Weather Service created a useful-looking map. Transmitting that map on a black swan net of 23 October... 2021, all stations in the net were able to receive one transmission and see generally what they could expect as well as context. As we saw with our early testing, MFSK images are not bit-for-bit -bit transmissions like we use for text, and different stations have images that are more or less clear based upon the path, time, and frequency in use for the transmission. Nevertheless, there is enough information to be useful for all stations. This is not a replacement for tabular data. The stations might want the details for their county, for example, but detail can follow in separate messages for each county directed to just the right station. Another variation of this theme can be seen by looking at power outage data. Tables can report outage by a provider, for example, while maps could be used to report the outages or to show the amount of outage by area, even broken down by county. We saw this example in Groundhog Day 22, no notice exercise discussed in our consideration of emergency activation and activation notices on this channel. In that exercise, we were following real world conditions as they unfolded. The poweroutage.us site keeps track of power outages. That seems like information that could be useful to emergency managers. This is a good example of where we have a lot of tabular information that could be useful to one audience, while an image could be more helpful to another. Tabular data show outages by provider, while another might like to see geographically focused information. A color version of that image might take too long to transmit reliably in adverse operating conditions. Transmitting a monochrome version might lose some of the pop or otherwise require a bit of study to assess. As received, the image can still show where there are more or less affected areas relative to one another. In some cases, the image might not be of good enough quality to provide the needed help and a trade-off will need to be made such as a color transmission or narrower bandwidth signal, either of which will increase the transmission time. Some testing and experimentation will be needed to show how the needs that the agencies have are going to be met. How well are we able to provide that service under a variety of conditions? Work with the agency personnel to help define standards of quality and performance. This work can provide the basis of standards for training baselines. Trained operators can then know how to perform the tasks and will choose the options defined by the procedure. This is imperative because when activated, emergency managers need information, not a science experiment. We continue to develop capabilities and to build standards for operation on the Black Swan Net. This is an area of active research and development for us. If you found this helpful, please like the video, share it with others, subscribe to avoid missing anything. Always happy to hear your questions and comments. 7-3, this is Radio KD8 TTE, out.